We didn't get into sailing eight years ago because we had a yearning to be out at sea or even a fascination with boats. We were just addicted to long-winded adventures and a sailboat seemed like the most practical way to travel around the world. So for a long time, we didn't think of ourselves as true sailors. Now here we are with over 18,000 nautical miles under our belts and a brand new catamaran to call home. We haven't owned the boat for even two weeks and we're already on day five of crossing the South China Sea, which is just nuts. And yet I can't imagine anywhere else in the world I would rather be. This is our last day at sea. These are our last hours at sea because we are about, I don't know, five hours away from our port. So this will be our first official check-in with Curiosity and it's very exciting. We are about to cut through two very unique little islands here and it is just a beautiful day at sea this morning was absolutely stunning it was like the sun came up and it also kind of burned off that marine layer and revealed the land so that was our first sight of land this morning at 6 a.m or whatever it was it was stunning we've just kind of been enjoying the coastline and super light light wind today so it is a little slow going, but it's hard to complain. One thing we are definitely enjoying on this very light wind and balmy day are these huge windows that just let the breeze flow all the way through the boat. I just, we would be baking without those windows open right now. And it's, the radio is very busy around here. <laughs> also, just because it's so light wind, we don't really have any worries about the sails interfering with windows or anything. Anyway, it's just very chill. So very chill. Pacific Port Patrol, this is inbound sailing vessel Curiosity. Sounds great, thank you very much. Standing by on 1-6. Okay, feel it. Good, we're T minus one mile away from our mooring wall. I was just writing a little update on our tractor map for all of our patrons. And as I was just thinking about, like we took acceptance, we moved aboard, and we have now made our first passage all within less than two weeks. That's crazy. Yeah. Like I am tired and that's probably for a good reason. <laughs> oh, ready have a couple of days on anchor, sundowners, swimming. Feels like tomorrow is like the first day of the rest of our lives. And all the rest of this has all just been sea trial. That's what it feels like. How's it? It's good. Found the mooring ball. Good job. Nailed it. First try. Now we're trying to figure out how to tie up to it. The, uh, the agent, his name is Miguel. I called him and he said, when you pick that up, He's like, it hasn't been used in a little bit. He said, it is, it is safe, but it's gonna be fouled. And it is fouled. <laughs> it weighs like a thousand pounds because it's probably for a super yacht. So we're trying to figure out how we can connect to it without damaging the paint job. Should have bought a cheaper boat. <laughs> First official run in the dinghy. Yeah. Literally an official run because I'm going to check in with the government. We have 90% power. Press start to run. Okay. Good to go. Good to go. You cost you? Cast me. I have oars. If... Yep. Okay. Doing donuts just for fun? <laughs> Alright, see you in a bit. Oh, you want to swim? What? You want to swim? What? <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while, we hired SEAL Super Yachts to help us, and with all the check-in process, it was the easiest check-in I think I've ever done. They handled quarantine for us, and then we just bopped over, or I just bopped over by myself with the passports, and that was it. Um, 
answered two or three questions from Immigration and Customs, signed some stuff. One major tip if you're coming to the Philippines, the boat stamp. Like, we never really had a proper boat stamp on our last boat, but this one it was like, oh, bring your boat stamp. And each one of them asked me to use the boat stamp for every single document that I signed. So, definitely worth the $5 or $8 yeah. to get a good boat stamp. And then we're cleared in. We are officially allowed to go to shore. They have a taxi service straight from here. So we're gonna maybe go in, get some provisions. And who knows what? Yeah. Beer and a burger? Yeah. Fish sandwich, whatever's local. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. You can stop hiding in the corner now, John. <laughs> <laughs> we're like trying to be out of the shot. <laughs> It feels so good to be back on our own boat at anchor, and most importantly, not living out of a suitcase. Oh my gosh, to not have to worry about the logistics of booking a hotel and trying to figure out where we're gonna live, that is worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, <laughs> it feels like it at this exact moment. It does, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a long freaking time, so it does feel very good. I Very packed good. away the suitcases yesterday. I was like, this feels so good. <laughs> like, I'm not getting these out for a <laughs> long time. Stuff them away in the <laughs> most difficult place to get to. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's like after like all the drama of COVID and then the extra drama of, you know, the weight and everything else. It's a lot of anticipation. So it does build up. So it does feel really, really good. Yeah. I know that's probably like the fourth time I've said that now, but it does feel really good. So oh, yeah. what have we been up to? Well, we dropped off the HH crew. Bye, thank you guys very much. Did a bit of errand running. Yay, tacos. No, no, no. <laughs> a new beer. <laughs> Sorry, I was waiting for that. Tastes like any kind of beer, you know, you get in the aisle, it's kind of light. Like pale ale. Fizzy, pale ale, yeah. It's great right this moment. Perfect. I'm repairing my flippy phone screen protector and getting a SIM card. 55 gigs of non-expiring data. There you go. For 1,500 pesos. There you go. Where are we getting around? Right there. Provisions. Done. We went on a couple of day sales with Casey because, well, now it was just the three of us, so we could actually kind of get into the boat, do a bit of sailing, get a feel for everything. It was really nice. Now, it's just us. Yeah, it's hanging out on Anchor. I know. <laughs> it's been so long since it has been just the two of us living on our our own boat. Did I say that it feels really good? Because it feels really good. <laughs> oh my goodness. We've been kind of decompressing and sort of trying to catch up with ourselves because it was all so hard and so fast and so intense for like the whole move-in process and the first passage. And so we've been trying to kind of catch our breath and then reading through all the comments from the video and all the questions. And it seems you guys really are just as excited as we are about us being back. Yeah, which is phone. awesome. So thank you for those words of encouragement. And my mom called and she's like, I watched the video three times and I cried every time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Why am I crying? It's not even my own point. Anyway. I'm so happy for you. Uh, yeah. yeah, very grateful to have you all along for the journey. It was really so, so many wonderful comments. So thank you very much. Yes. And of course, uh, a lot of you had questions or concerns or thoughts, or you noticed something in the video. So we thought, hey, we're real time. That was just a, you know, a week ago. Yeah, so. everybody kind of wants to know what are the first impressions, right? Like, is it everything that you hoped and dreamed it would be? Since it is a sailboat, we should talk about sails. And one thing I was a little worried about was deploying the continuous line furling head sails. So the reacher, and the spinnaker. I was pleasantly surprised that I was able to get it up on my own without really any help. That's what she said. <laughs> Casey was over there sitting 
watching me, making sure I did it right. We had the HH team making sure everything looked good. So I did it all by myself. And that was the first time I've ever done it myself. So that was pretty cool. Two big things I've learned. Our sail locker here is very tight. It barely fits both of our sails here. And that's kind of unfortunate because also this bag is just a sail bag. It's not UV protected. So this is a big lesson learned for me. When you order sails that might have to live on the trampoline, make sure you get a UV protected sail bag. I had no idea. Now I've placed an order for a UV protected one for both the Reacher and the Spinnaker. So that way while we're sailing, if we want to leave it on the trampoline, if we want to put some more stuff in our locker, I can always keep at least one sail out if I have to. But overall, the performance from each sail, I was really happy with the quality of each sail. I love it. I love the design that we chose. Good job, Doyle. Thank you. So continuing on the theme of things I kind of wish we would have bought, one of them is a projector and a screen. And I know that seems probably a little bit silly, but movie nights on a boat are like the best. And then the option, of course, to take it to the beach and share with the group is pretty great. And we were looking, but we just weren't looking seriously because we just had too many things on the brain and we weren't sure because we weren't on the boat so we really didn't know if there was going to be a good place for it but now we're oh man we feel like if we were here you could be watching a big screen right here it would be like a little drop down and then you could watch it from inside and looking this direction or from out there or maybe we mount it right over here and it drops down and then you've got all of this space and everybody can sit right here and watch the movie. I just feel like maybe if somebody out there knows if you've got one or you know of a really good one for a marine environment, that would be super handy. But especially the, the whole drop down screen thing. I don't. Yeah, looking for suggestions. So if you have one and you like it, definitely leave me a comment. I would like to know about it. Thank you very much. And of course, the other thing that makes movie nights so great on a boat is our longtime supporter and sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. Because with Surfshark, you can watch movies and TV shows from anywhere around the world. Because Surfshark is an app and web browser extension that allows us to change our IP address to virtually place ourselves anywhere in the world to unblock websites and content that we couldn't access otherwise. So we've used Surfshark to unblock apps like Venmo or Spotify, and of course, to get around geo restrictions on streaming services like Netflix. You could log into the Philippines and watch a Filipino drama with us, or pop over to the UK and find yourself some good witty British humor because they have 3,200 servers in over 100 countries. So you can virtually go anywhere. Plus they have a clean web feature, which means that we can surf in a clean cyber ocean with no ads, trackers, malware, or phishing attempts. And let me tell you, Surfshark has saved our butts more times than I can count. And right now, if you use the link down in the description box below, then they will give you three extra months for free. Most importantly, if you don't feel like it's a good tool for you, no worries, because they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is no risk to try it out. Just click the link down in the description box below or scan the QR code that will be somewhere here on the screen. So thank you again to Surfshark for supporting the show. Next question. You had five people on this boat. Where the heck did everybody sleep? Well, everybody on this boat is familiar with hot bunk. And that's when you're on watch, you're out here. When you're sleeping, you're down there. So they would swap the bunk based on, you know, what their job was for that time. We also have a blow up mattress. So we have like an impromptu, like makeshift bed in the workshop. And that's kind of an emergency if we ever have anybody on board temporarily. And that's kind of where John slept most of the time. But otherwise, this place is so big. We had Kyle lounging out here a lot of the time. So he was like ready to jump into action, especially when it was windy. We had John sleeping out here every now and then. We had Casey lounging over here and Nikki and me. And there's just like, look at this place. There are so many spots to lay down and you're not in the way because you're not in the way of the hounds. And that's what's so great about this boat. Beautiful, wonderful, absolutely amazing living space. So one of my biggest concerns whenever we very first put down our deposit for this boat was the helm stations. Like I loved the idea of them, but I didn't know in all reality, once it was built, what it was gonna be like 
Would the visibility be good? What was it gonna be like looking through all the glass? My concerns were sort of like put to bed after our C trials on hole number one, because essentially this turns into like a working pit, right? You can have three, four, five people over here and you've got two people that are working the lines and then somebody else can be all the way over here looking through, you know, navigating, steering. And it was really, a, like it's a very cool kind of group atmosphere in that respect. But we hadn't done any sort of like real passage making, right? Like no overnights, no nothing else. So it was very interesting to kind of have that first experience. And it was still just more of the same. Now I really love this whole working area because you can see your sails. You've got good visuals of everything. If it's not this side, you got the dual helms, you just run over to the other side and it's no up and down and back over or anything like that. Like it is on some of the raised helms. It's just a quick bop over and then bam, you're in it. Or if you've tacked or you've jibed, you're already on the other side. So it's just a very seamless transition from one side to the other. And everything is mostly right here or right there. It's not located like five different places. And I did notice a lot of comments saying, there's no seat at the helm. Well, there is a seat at the helm. So this is our helm seat. So you can kind of chill right here, which we did do, but our watches, because there were so many of us were so short, we were only on for two hours each. You didn't really need them. You were mostly just kind of hanging out, standing, checking on things or lounging somewhere else. But at night, this was like my setup right here because we had so many calm nights. So the stars are really great. The bioluminescence is really beautiful. So I'd park it right here. This sort of acted as like my little coffee table. So I'd have my cup of tea out here and just chill. And it was really lovely and beautiful. And if it's on autopilot, then you could have the steering wheel here. Yeah. Or if you need a steer. Just like that. Very lazy. Or the other thing was, you'd end up standing right here and doing this number. It's everybody's go-to. Every single person that's been on the helm has ended up doing this. One of the main reasons we were drawn to this boat is the EcoDrive, and that's our hybrid electric motor. And let's just say on that sail, it did not disappoint. I mean, at times we were pulling in 1500 watts, 2000 watts, I think we saw at one time, per shaft. And that's just, it just blows me away. I mean, our solar's doing something, yeah, of course, but this is this is the ticket. And Hydro Region is like a windmill. You know, it generates power as it spins, except it's underwater. So that's exactly what we're doing. That prop is spinning, it's putting power into our battery bank. We we're very happy with all of that. You may have noticed on the screen, like sometimes one side was generating power and the other side wasn't. And that was because we would feather one side just to see what would happen. Um, they're also still working on the programming because we have a different prop than what hole number one and number two have. So hopefully very soon we will have updated programming that matches our props and hopefully they'll tweak a little bit more power out at slower speeds because I want to see it really kick in at like four and five knots. That would kind of be the dream. We did a video on our hybrid eco drive with James back at the factory. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that, you can watch that video. We will continue to update and share as we use this system because we're very excited about it. And then another thing this eco drive does is when we turn on the engines, it makes the motors like generators. So we cram a ton of power into the battery banks while we're motoring. And a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people commented on how loud the engines were. And there's two reasons. So when you fire up the engine the very first time, I accidentally had generate mode on. So that puts a lot of stress on the motor. I should technically have had it off let the engines warm up, then turn it on. So that's kind of why you get that right when I left the dock, like because they were under a lot of strain because they were generating a lot of power while I'm sitting there and idle. So I kind of messed that one up. And then the second time Kyle was out here, Nikki was cooking in the galley. The engine compartment was wide open. So the motor is just radiating all of the noise. There's no sound dampening. And Kyle's like at full throttle because he's testing. He's trying to get data for that programming. So that's why the motors were so loud in that portion of the video, those two portions of the video. 
So just to be clear, there is sound dampening because the motors are underneath our beds. And when the compartment is open, that's when, of course, you're gonna get all of that noise. But when it's closed, it is incredibly quiet and surprisingly, like almost no vibration. So it's very comfortable to be sleeping in here, even if you're under diesel engine, obviously better when you're on electric, hence the eco drive setting, but it does work very well. And then of course, since I'm in here, I wanna talk about our beds. So many boat mattresses are so utterly crappy. <laughs> I mean, they're usually thin and they're stiff foam. It's just not comfortable. I have stayed on so many uncomfortable mattresses in boats, except for Destination. It was a super yacht. They had very nice mattresses, <laughs> definitely. And then our boat, I would say we have super yacht mattresses, like, because they are so nice. And I remember that from even staying on Frank and Mary Grace's boat, Take It to Ride. We slept like babies and same thing. Oh my gosh. I have slept so good every single night. This is the nicest mattress I've slept on in a long time. So there is one downside and that is the fact, and you would almost never anybody say this. I didn't expect for me to say this. I wish the mattresses were slightly smaller, <laughs> but only by like a little bit because they fit like a glove in this space. So when you do go to open the engine compartment or to make the bed, it is, you really are stuffing. It's like a wrestling match. Yeah, of, of us in these sheets. But other than that, they're great. But you know, maybe for future boats, HH, maybe make them just like, just the tiniest hair smaller would make the biggest difference. I'm tempted to shave it off, but it wouldn't work very well. So is what it is for me, but there you go. That's getting nitpicky. So let's help with that flag. Well, there's two parts to that. One is, this is the Marshall Islands flag, the bikini. This is the port that we are registered in. That's why it also says bikini on the back of our boat. And this flag specifically is just a laminated printed document that HH made for us so we could have a proper flag when we sailed out of China. We I haven't, don't know if it's proper, but well, a flag. <laughs> a flag. We're still waiting on ours to arrive here in the Philippines. There's a lot of good reasons uh, why we decided to register our boat with the Marshall Islands. And I was planning on making a video for our patrons, but if you're interested in knowing the details, the reasons why, kind of the benefits of why we did it, I'm happy to make a video to share with everybody. Just drop me a note, leave something in the comments, and let me know you're interested in bikinis. Or bikini, <laughs> maybe maybe bikini Marshall Islands, of course. That might be more uh, to the point. I feel like we could just go on and on with our thoughts and ideas on this boat, but there are just too many of them and this would be an hour long plus video. But we were not the only ones on board. We also had Casey, who is the owner of hole number five. So when we were on our day sale, I did ask him what his first impressions were. I'm really impressed with the helm station. The lines are all easy to handle. The boat steers well. It's got a really light helm. You can stand right here and drive and see pretty well. If you need to check to the other side, it's easy enough to cross. I'm pretty impressed with the sailing ability. I think it motors slower than I'm used to. So it's like a five knot motoring boat, but that's kind of expected because the propellers are optimized for regeneration, more so than propulsion. So if you really wanted to motor, you could probably get another knot or two faster with different propellers, but then your regeneration wouldn't be so good. Uh, and I think you guys prioritize regeneration and we will also with our boat. We can motor a little slow, that's okay. We'd rather be while we're sailing making power. Yeah. Overall, I would say we're 100% happy. Now granted, we're like two weeks in, so. It hasn't exactly been that long. And we, of course, are just now starting to get into the warranty process, which will be its own thing. People are already asking about that. And I'm like, I don't know. I haven't filed for any yeah. official warranty claims yet because of course, everybody in China has been on Chinese New Year. And then for us, we've honestly just been trying to catch up and catch our, our breath. We know this, like no matter what kind of boat you have, new boat, old boat, you always got boat problems. So we are starting to file the warranty claims and like a random one that just happened a couple days yeah. ago, we got this warning, DFD, delayed defrost on our fridge. Oh, there goes our light. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we got to claim my light. <laughs> this is a photography light. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing Not to do way. with AJ. Uh, anyway, so we're like, well, what the heck? And the manual says call customer support. So that's now a warranty claim. For us. So far, we were really lucky. We didn't have anything big or major yeah. like our 
sales are good. All the gear seems fine. We don't have any major functioning problems, like nothing that's going to hold us back from sailing yet. And I feel like I have to put the, because it is a boat, like it is inevitable. Something is going to happen. And I feel like because we got so lucky with our first passage, I do, I feel like I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like something is gonna happen because something always happens. It is a boat and it is boat life. <laughs> Jason's like, la, 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 la. One thing yeah. we've learned over the past two years is that when things start to get stressful, you really need to have a routine and take care of yourself. And for us, like the next two weeks or so, um, we're gonna really try to dig into finding that routine. Yoga every morning, that was always our thing on Curiosity One, and we're very excited to kind of get back into that groove of like waking up, having our vitamins, yeah. doing our yoga, you know, working out, which we desperately need to do, um, and just settling into the boat. We've got so much Swimming, organizing. Swimming, breath work, meditation, like the whole <laughs> thing. I'm excited about like that, that for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, getting all back into it in, in other words. Yeah, and the past, the past month has really been stressful, so we thought, we should take we should take a week for ourselves. So our next video will be a boat tour, which we desperately owe you guys. Yeah, but we need a week to like organize, actually settle into the boat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a few things we need to order, some stuff we need to sort out. Oh, we're speaking of ordering. If anybody, I'm very serious about the projector and the screen. <laughs> priorities. <laughs> hey, priorities <laughs> on this boat. Movie nights. Um, it's a big thing. Anyway. Speaking of meditation. <laughs> If you do have any suggestions, I am very keen to hear what those are. Or maybe you've seen something else or noticed something on the passage or even, you know, on today's video. Anyway, the feedback is always so great. Thank you very much. It is very appreciated. So we won't see you next week, but we will see you the week after with the boat tour. Yes. Thank you so much for all the comments, all the excitement. You are yes. excited as us, and that's a freaking cool thing. So. Yeah. Anyway, Thank lots of love. Yeah. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. And we're going to be like super fit oh, yeah. and so chill. It's going to be great. <laughs> so we got to bring in like doubles, like all, 20 all years younger. All that's going to happen in just two weeks. <laughs>